Today, I'm going to be going over the exact plan I would recommend if my goal was to get as lean as possible whilst holding or building as much muscle as possible over a 90 day period. So this is going to be the 90 day fat loss routine explained, broken down from start to finish. So first things first, fat loss, caloric deficit. We all know this, okay? You need to follow the calories. You need to make sure you take this bit seriously. Otherwise, it's not going to happen for you. Do not waste your time, okay? This is to get as lean as possible, and I'm using a male as an example. First things first, we need to work out our maintenance calories. So just for the, this video, I have taken a 90 kg male, nearly me, who's gonna train three days a week, which is all you need to get in amazing shape with a goal of dropping 1% of his body weight per week. How did I work this out? I literally went on Google, typed in calorie calculator, clicked on the first one, put 90 kilos, put fairly active, put my, uh, my weight, age, whatever, and it brought me up a number. My maintenance calorie on this calculator, so if you're male, female, big or small, still do it, it's gonna give you your number and then you work off of that. Brought me at my maintenance calories, moderate exercise, you know, three to four, five times a week, was 2,924 calories. Let's just call it 3,000 calories is my maintenance, just to make this straightforward, okay? This is the plan I would use, and I've used something very similar to this every single year for multiple years to get myself in the best shape possible. So 3,000 calories are maintenance. Now, we can be super aggressive, but my advice to you would be start on the slow end and build up as you go, because it's going to get harder as you go. The last 30 days are gonna be the hardest 30 days. You do not wanna be absolutely starving 20 days into this and ready to stop, okay? Start slow and pick up pace as we go. So overall calories, this is what I would do. For example, we have week one to four, 2,750. 250 calories off, pretty basic, okay? Week five to eight, 2,500 calories. Week nine to 12, 2,250 calories. So I'm dropping 250 calories every four weeks. Now, my macros are gonna be different to your macros, but we're looking at one gram of protein per pound of body weight. See so if I'm close to 200 pounds, I'm looking at 200 grams of protein. Carbohydrates and fats, it doesn't matter. Just fit them in whichever way you need to hit your 2750. If you're not gonna track your calories and you hate my fitness pal, this probably isn't gonna work for you, okay? We need to know where we're at. What gets tracked gets managed and then we can work down from there. But I'm always gonna keep my protein consistent. It stays consistent, let's say 195 to 200 grams per day for 90 days. And as my weight comes down from 90 kilos down to close to 80 kilos, I would still keep my protein kind of based off of that 90 kilo mark. We always wanna keep it slightly higher because the deeper we get into a deficit, the more uh, muscle we're probably gonna lose and we really wanna try and maintain as much as possible. But month one, month two, month three, here, easy, okay? What's the second, the third thing, training. Now, as I always preach on this channel, three times a week is plenty. Okay, 10 to 20 sets per muscle group per week is plenty. Working in that six to 15 or 20 rep range, and all that matters is that we're training hard and close to failure during these sessions, okay? If you wanna know exactly what plan I would do, I have another video which explains the perfect three-day plan, and I would do that. But it's three full body sessions a week, everything being hit, including your legs. Now, I know I'm gonna be dropping weight every single week here. It's important that as my metabolism slows down, as I start to lose body fat and it gets a little bit harder to come off, it's important that my output gets higher over time. This is why it's so important to start slow. We do not want to end up starving ourselves and just being so burnt out that we can't do cardio. Start slow and build up. You can, if you're maintaining your weight at 3,000 calories and you shift to 2750 with training and cardio, you will respond super quick. And if you're somebody who doesn't respond and for some reason you're just not, weight's not dropping, you're either not tracking your food properly or you might have to be someone that goes a little bit more aggressive. 2,500, you know, 2,000, 1,800. Sorry, that's just the way it is. Now, cardio and steps. As you can see, I kind of titrate up, whereas I came down with my calories. Week one to week four, 20 minutes, three times a week, plus 8,000 steps a day. 
that's where I'd start. I've literally done this before with slightly more calories, multiple years in a row, and I get absolutely ripped every single year, okay? Week five to eight, 25 minutes times three, plus 10,000 steps, slight increase in output, decrease in calories, we're gonna continue burning body fat. Week nine to week 12, we're going 30 minutes times three, plus 12,000 steps. 60 minutes of cardio, then 75 minutes of cardio, then 90 minutes of cardio, and our steps have gradually come up. Burning more calories through cardio, through training, decreasing through our food, and we're gonna end up getting leaner and leaner and leaner, month one, uh, month two, and month three. Now, which type of cardio should we be doing? I would recommend sticking to steady state cardio. There's already a lot of stress on the body. There's a lot of fatigue. There's a lot of hunger. It's so important that we're able to stick to this. HIIT training can spike your hunger. When you get very, very fatigued, what you'll notice from, from HIIT, if you do a real HIIT session, it writes you off and you kind of want to sit down. The bulk of our calories are burned through NEAT, through moving around, through non-exercise activity thermogenesis, moving around. And what you'll find is as you start to fatigue, these are gonna suffer. This is why it's so important to actually track your steps, to have the number to hit. I guarantee you, if you're not tracking your steps, even if you think you're doing a lot of steps, if you were to look at the number over time, this would decrease as you start to get more fatigue. Even the way you talk kind of become a bit more monotone. You don't move around as much. I remember doing my first bodybuilding prep last year, and I remember being thirsty and being sat down and not having the energy to get up and go get a glass of water, and I'd rather just sit there and be thirsty you can get knackered. We need to slowly come down in calories and slowly come up in cardio whilst smashing ourselves three times a week in the gym, focusing on progressive overload. By doing this, we're gonna get a lovely look after 90 days and I guarantee you this guy would end up from 90 kilos to around 80 kilos and would have a much, much cleaner and tighter physique. I'm gonna put pictures up on the screen now of me starting my bodybuilding prep where I followed something very similar to this except I was 100 kilos so my starting calories were 3200 and my cardio started at 30 minutes and I kind of did the same module but I obviously was a little bit more cardio a bit more food and I went from this to this so it worked for me it's worked for hundreds of my clients I've used the same formula just different numbers for a male, uh, different numbers for a female based off of their calories. I still use these calorie calculators. Now, this stuff works, give it a try. If you like these sort of videos, head to my Instagram, Maxi No Muscle, where I'm posting stuff like this all the time, just in short form content. And I hope you have learned something today.